As operadoras de telecomunicações enfrentam o desafio de fazer frente à demanda criada pelo vídeo via internet. O Futurecom All Year conversa com Morgan Kirk, diretor de tecnologia da Comscope, que está nos Estados Unidos, e fala sobre esse e outros temas. Morgan, como as operadoras podem se preparar para o crescimento do vídeo? So, video has been a driving force in the telco industry for quite a while. Uh, today, more than 50% of Brazilians actually stream video daily, and this number is just increasing. So it's very important for our industry as a whole to, to deal with this in, in new and innovative ways. Now, this both happens in the wireless space as well in, in the wired space. Really, what we have to answer the question, the way we need to answer the question, is really in the context of efficiency. These networks have got to add capacity, but they have to do so in a cost-effective way because that's really what's being demanded by users. On the wired side of the world, that means pushing fiber ever deeper into the network. And we have some technologies like indexing that helps do that. In the case of wireless, there are basically three ways of adding capacity to your network. You can increase frequency, which the government does on occasion, You can increase technology, add technologies like MIMO, which enables multiple streams to happen at the same time. And this is something which we support in our antenna technology. And finally, you can increase this through sectorization, through small cells or through other sectorization like cell splitting. And we assist in all of these types of things to really add to that capacity layer to ensure that there is capacity for the ever-growing video demand. Qual é a importância das chamadas small cells para a cobertura do 4G? So small cells really needs to be defined first, and I break small cells into metro cells, which exist on the outside in cities, and indoor cells, cells that add capacity by uh, by covering buildings. Now, while small cells, in theory, add coverage, their main purpose is to add capacity. And this is going to be very, very important for 5G and, and for continuing evolution of 4G in that our capacity needs are really growing and they're growing at a rate that's too fast for either technology or additional frequencies to keep up with. So we're going to have a lot more of these indoor cells and a lot more of these metro cells throughout the network to add capacity. O que podemos esperar da tecnologia 5G? 5G technology has three basic use cases. The first use case is uh, high speed mobility, the same use case that we've had for many years, increasing capacity and speed for users, uh, humans that we have today. The second use case is really the Internet of Things, or connecting all sorts of devices to the Internet that weren't connected in the past machines primarily. The third use case is really low latency and high speed use cases. You can think of these things as connecting cars or in many cases connecting, let's say, a doctor for a remote medical surgery. Things where if you have any sort of delay, the network uh, fails to function to, to meet its needs. Now 5G today is in the first stage of every network evolution, and that's really in irrational exuberance. We have a situation where today it can do anything because the standards are just being created. We haven't really worked out how both the technology and the monetary version of this will work. The second stage of 5G will be um, deep depression, when we understand that all of our dreams can't come true exactly as they did. The third stage is understanding, and the fourth stage is acceptance. And these things are very normal for the network. So while we have these three use cases, we're going to see an evolution, a change going on as these things come to fruition, as the standards get, get done, and as the economics bear, uh, bear effort on this. And, and we'll really see how 5G will evolve into something that will be great in the next decade. Qual é a sua opinião a respeito da adoção do acesso via fibra em um país como o Brasil, que tem uma grande base de consumidores de baixa renda? Well, Latin America and Brazil, specifically, but Latin America in general, 
has less, just slightly under a 20% penetration rate today, and it's grown fairly rapidly above 25% for, for FTTH. But as FTTH grows, uh, has a higher penetration, it becomes harder and harder to economically justify either the consumer or the geography where this is being done. So in more rural areas or in different types of geographies, it becomes more challenging. So we expect the evolution to change in a number of ways. One, you invent technology that simply makes FTTH to be less expensive. We're doing that in the form of something called indexing and, and self-cleaning connectors. These things make networks being able to be multi-purposed and also being able to be deployed much quicker and much more efficiently and be able to be changed in the future much better. That being said, there are going to be architectural changes. FTTH may not happen everywhere. It may cha change to FTTDP, which is a demarcation point, something that's not quite at the home, but it's near the home. That last 100 meters, that last 500 meters, may actually be more efficient to be wireless or some other technology than fiber all the way to the home. What we do know for sure is fiber is going deeper because ultimately that's the most economic way of providing bandwidth to the consumer. Quais são as principais tecnologias em que vocês estão trabalhando hoje? So Comscope really works on the physical layer. That's where our innovation is. And for the fixed line network, we look at things like fiber indexing, we look at things like self-cleaning connectors, we look at ways of making a system into Lego blocks that can be plugged together. It really reduces the skill necessary for deployment and the cost for deployment and then the ongoing cost. How do you make sure the network is able to, the physical layer network is able to be maintained over time? On the wireless side, we have a great deal of innovation in, in everything from the outdoor network where where we innovate a lot on antennas in making the antenna patterns uh, much better than they are today and making both coverage and capacity be increased because of reduced interference. To our indoor network where we have new innovative DAS product lines as well as PicoCell product lines that can be configured in a virtual cloud RAN configuration, what we're calling building cloud RAN which enable a technology that we have termed smart reuse, where a single cell is created and all of the users in a building appear on that same single cell. This gives the advantages that you would have out of DAS with the capacity that you would have out of a small cell or a pico cell. It's a unique technology to Comscope. We're bringing all of these things to bear in an effort to make the 4G networks, the advanced 4G networks, and the 5G networks uh, more efficient and be able to keep up with the demands of the networks of the future. Na sua opinião, quais são as principais tendências do mercado de telecomunicações? So really, so much of the telecom market is about efficiency today. How do I more efficiently deliver bits to consumers? How do I keep up with the data tsunami that's occurred because of video and will continue because of greater video use, higher interaction, machine-to-machine -machine technology, quite frankly, things like holography and uh, higher definition and virtual reality and virtual augmentation. These are all the trends that are going on. They all come down to how do I reduce the latency, how do I increase the capacity, how do I make the network more flexible, and how do I do it more cost-effectively. These are the things that we see. It's a very exciting time in the telco industry. We're looking forward to a decade that we've largely completed connecting people. And we're starting to be in the, the era of connecting everything to everything else. What I see for the future is nothing but opportunity. Eu conversei com Morgan Kirk, da Comscope. Muito obrigado, Morgan. Thank you.